Hey y'all, Bob with Million Mile Garage. It's a Toasty 48 in here. We got the heater going, that's nice. Um, this most likely is the next video, this is the next day. And uh, I was gonna take advantage of the morning light so I could kind of get a, a good picture of the boars. Ordinarily I would roll the block outside, but it's like 25, so <laughs> I hope you guys will forgive me for that. Uh, just panning in here, you can see uh, how deep the scoring is. Uh, where that you know piece of hose clamp you know got embedded on the piston um, and it's and it's extensive and uh, I guess the shadow effect kind of covers it but there's you can see it was scored on the top as well so there was a lot of damage done there uh, just going next door real quick you can see how nice uh, that cylinder bore was in you do have a little bit of polishing from the rings you know where the piston changes directions uh, there's absolutely no ridge whatsoever, no noticeable ridge. Uh, those, the, the piston came out very easy. Um, but, you know, this is kind of like, that ring clamp is kind of like Moses part in water, you know? Moses. Um, so I can feel it raised with my fingers. I think a hone would, would relieve a lot of that. So that would, you know, allow the piston ring to sit, you know, to seat firmly into the bore. But I don't think I can remove all that scoring. And, you know, that's not really what honing is for anyway. Um, so unfortunately, it's going to probably be uh, a rebore, and I hate to just rebore one cylinder. You know, in the old days, I think you could just get a piston like 10 over, but you know, aftermarket stuff, I think they all kind of started either 20 or 30 over. So I think we're looking at 30 over uh, new pistons. And speaking of the pistons, real quick, um, we got this one right here, um, and you can see the top ring is stuck in the top ring land, and that's probably from the damage. And you can see the hose clamp, that's nice. Um, bottom ring was not stuck. Um, but you look how tight the gap is still. I don't think these rings had worn very much either. Um, amazing, a quarter million miles, uh, how little wear there was in this engine. Probably a lot of it can be attributed to better metals, uh, but also the oils and also religious oil changes. This thing rarely went more than three or 4,000 miles between oil changes. And you can see how badly this ring got, I mean, this uh, not ring, how bad this bearing got hammered. You can see the back of it was getting hammered. You see it's polished a little. Um, and you can see there's a little polish action inside the Conrod. I don't think that's that's probably not normal. Um, let's just see the Ford part number. That's nice. Um, probably won't have to resize that. I don't. It didn't spin the bearing, so I would think the little bit of polishing happening there. I don't think that would have opened anything up enough to be a problem. Um, but obviously these bearings get hammered. I don't think the rest of the bearings are going to look like that in the engine. I think just the offended cylinder. I think that's the issue we're going to have. And uh, so uh, I guess we'll get on with it. We'll get the rest of this apart today. Hey, just panning in real quick. I think I've got a good shot right here where that kind of paints a pretty good picture. You can see how deep the scoring is. Or gouging. It's really more like gouging, right? Um, it looks pretty terrible. So yeah, like right there. Kind of move back and forth. You can kind of get a good good shot of that um, yeah that's tore up pretty good yeah hey just showing you also just rode down so I wouldn't forget uh, for whatever reason I couldn't find a half inch drive an 18 millimeter or uh, the 11 16 if you notice in the video I think we had a uh, a downsizer adapter uh, on our big half inch drive wrench and that resulted in a broken socket it didn't open up all the way but it did crack so kind of weird but um, we'll uh, I'll go exchange that out at Lowe's I guess that's that's who has craftsman now it's still a lifetime warranty even though the sockets are all made in China and they're a slightly different um, you know style than what they once were that's fine and then I also think I'll pick up the size and the craftsman each one of those flavors in the half inch. Try to this in the pan. Yeah, just throw it in the pan. Keep it clean. We'll probably replace the pump just because of the miles. Sure.
Oh, that one looks pretty good. It's got some lines in it, but it's not too bad. I'm curious to see what the other one looks like. That's about got it. This one is coming out. I got it. Just knock it out. She's coming. Doesn't really want to move now. Yeah, just uh, just coax it just a little more. It'll come out. There we go. Got it. All right, and that top ring is not stuck. Now you can see where we push the carbon off the top of the cylinder, but that ring looks just fine. It's not stuck like the other one. And that piston skirt actually looks about the same. It doesn't look terrible. Um, look at that. That to me looks like an engine that got hammered quite a bit before it failed too. <laughs> That's, yeah. Had a lot of miles on it too, so I can't blame all of that on Austin. Okay, I think we're gonna roll this over just a tad, okay? We're gonna take this this way just a little bit. We want that lined up so we don't hit the end of the uh, bottom of the cylinder when you drive this out. Let's give that just a little more, that's good. There you go. Boom chuckalucka. Let's see how that one looks. Oh, the bearing insert stayed on the crank, didn't it? Is it still stuck on there? Oh yeah, it's in here. Let's see how that one looks. That one goes to the top, right? That one's not as bad. It still hurt though. It's just worn out. But obviously that one that got really hammered from Hydrolock, that one, <laughs> that one really wore away some material. That one doesn't look as bad. It's still worn though. This engine, this engine had a lot of wear on it. See, there's the one that's, uh, you know, from the uh, the number five cylinder. I'm just doing a comparison. Yeah. Heck, you could just leave it in place. You don't have to worry about scarring the crank when you put those rubber things on. You gotta twist those suckers on. Yep. The crank's looking pretty good, too. The crank doesn't look bad at all. You can see there was a real milkshake going on for lubrication. Probably didn't do all the bearings and stuff any good either. Piece of cake. Yeah, that's how we should have been doing this the whole time. Yeah. If we'd have cleaned the carbon ring off, it would come out a little easier, but no big deal. No biggie. Yeah, that's in good shape. Yeah, the pistons actually don't look too bad at all. Not bad. 
Let's see, we lost our bearing down on there. No big deal. We're just going to fish that out with a magnet. Oh, that bearing's got a fair amount of wear on it as well. That one's got exposed metal. Sure. We'll just grab a, a mag magnet. We'll come in here and fish that sucker out. Where is that thing? There it is. Oh, yeah. I think that confirms that's a steel bearing, right? Ferrous metal. And actually, the back of it doesn't look too bad. And uh, you can see that one's wore away a fair amount as well. I'm trying to get to an angle where it's not so. There we go. Yep, that one's used up as well. We'll take that one. All right. Okay, we're coming right along. We get a couple more, and we'll get this crank out. too bad either and the rings aren't stuck on that one I swear I think the other one was damaged from you know hitting all that all that fod cool You want me to grab it? You got it? <laughs> He's caught it with your knee. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad either. What's the bearing look like on that one? Just curious. Oh, that one was hammered pretty bad too. Look at that. Maybe they're just wore out. Okay. Sure. Now when? When? Send it home. Got it. Sure. Look, this is what 250,000 miles worth of uh, self-blueprinting does. Unbelievable. Pretty cool, huh? Yep, not much resistance there. Yeah, you gotta lay into it. That's tight. Oh yeah. I need a longer uh, socket for that one. 
Okay. Oh yeah, because of the stud. I think some of what we're seeing is corrosion. I think because uh, engine coolant got on the oil and they sat for a couple months before you took it apart. I think that's some of the problem we're having with these bearings. That one doesn't look too bad. You know, nearly a quarter of a million miles. There you go. That one's a milkshake. Now, interesting thing, you see how this one's got the, it looks like the thrust bearing is in those, those center journal. I think small block Chevys are the same way. And you can see how the uh, material is worn away from the thrust bearing. And that's a common wear point on manual shift cars. Because manual shift cars have a tendency to move the crankshaft back and forth when you clutch. Really? Yeah, so that puts a little, little extra wear on the thrust bearing part. Never so, really thought about that. Yeah, there's usually only one thrust bearing. There you go. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It actually doesn't look bad. Let me just smear my finger on it. You can see there's a lot of a lot of schmooze on there from the um, you know the milkshake from the engine coolant getting in the oil. But I'd say for you know quarter million miles or so that actually looks that looks really good. Yeah. Now this one might come off a little weird because we've still got that one piece rear main seal in there. Yeah, I've got I've got a tool out in the other garage. You know, we're coming in and just like getting underneath that lip and prying this out, but I don't feel like walking out the other garage because it's like 40 degrees outside. So I'm just gonna walk this off. I think it'll just come loose. It'll just pull the seal out with it. Yeah, it'll come out. I can walk it out like this, I think. A little bit. Nope. I did get the seal to come loose a little. Okay, I broke the seal loose down there. Now I can dig it out. I'm just getting all. I'm not setting the world on fire here. But I think this has broke it loose. I'm being lazy. I'm tearing this all up. There we go. Almost got it. Just don't want to give it up. Oh, almost. It's hanging down here. Come on. Playing hard to get. I'm just reaching out with my fingers. Probably at this point I could use a screwdriver. See if it'll go. <laughs> don't let me get you with this all. Yeah, these Harbor Freight uh, 29 cent alls, they don't really uh, don't have a lot of... There it is. Just doesn't want to give it up. There we go. Okay. That bearing looks good too. Oh, that looks fine. 
Yep. Yep, that looks good. That looks real good. Okay. Yeah, those all look pretty good. I swear I think some of this might be a little corrosion just from the antifreeze that was in the oil. This thing sat for a couple months. It looks, doesn't look terrible. Those bearings look good. I mean, quarter million miles, can't complain. Just looking at the bores. You can see there's some scarring, nothing major. You can't, I can feel that with my fingernail a little bit, but it's not very deep at all, very minor. So there's definitely was some scoring. You can see that's where the piston skirts were riding. So they're not as pristine as I originally thought, but they're pretty good. You know, there's the Hertz cylinder. That one got scored pretty bad. I think I can come around, maybe I can show you the other, other part of it. Kind of just going down. You see the real deep lines. Yeah, I think the worst one was uh, Oh yeah, right in there, you can see it right here. Yep, really deep. Yeah, you can see that right there. That really got scarred up from that hose clamp. So yeah, definitely a rebore, but I didn't feel too bad about it. I think the engine's got enough miles on it. I mean, a hone probably wouldn't even take out all of that light scoring. It might, it's pretty minimal. You're not really supposed to use a hone to remove metal. That one's pretty deep. So, yeah, not a tragedy. And the bearings, they look pretty darn good, everything considered. You can see there's some material worn away on the thrust part. I was rocking the crank back and forth before I didn't show it on the video, but it definitely has, you know, definitely was a little loose. I would say not terrible, but, you know, typical for a stick shift car, you're gonna get a lot more wear on that thrust bearing. Yeah, and just over here real quick. They don't look too bad. As you can see, some of these got hammered pretty good. Yep. 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 I think the one that was really missing a lot was that the... I think that's the... Is that the, is that the, uh, the FOD one? No, it's not. Oh, I think we took them out of the FOD piston. Yep. There's the FOD piston. FOD 5.0. Crank journals look really good. Very minimal wear. Nothing I can feel with my fingernail. I mean, just because I got OCCD when it comes to that, I might polish that with sandpaper, but I'll tell you what, those look pretty darn good. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, and uh, hey, hit like and subscribe. We've got a lot of content coming up. We're going to do a major build on this. You guys are going to have to tell us how we're going to do it. Austin's already thinking he wants to put uh, aluminum cylinder heads on it. He wants to do a fresh set of forged flat top pistons, and he wants to do some kind of crazy camshaft. What were you wanting to put in it? F cam. F cam. Okay, F that. All right, talk to y'all later.